Any other guests who would like to ask a question most, is most welcome. Um, I would like to ask you two questions. My first question is, there seems to be constant struggle for freedom in Kashmir. What do you believe is the solution? The question is about the freedom struggle in Kashmir. Now I understand that uh, here there would be many Indian guests as well. And if we turn this forum into a political forum, particularly in the areas of such as Kashmir, where the struggle is going on, then many other areas of the world would also require attention. And uh, the purpose of this, this meeting, this session, will be in fact undermined because we are holding such sessions to unite the world, to bring them together. So if we indulge in such questions which are controversial, there are two sides to it, then there is a danger of bad blood flowing between guests and guests. So I should like to avoid the answer, confronting the issue as such. But in principle I can only say that uh, peace is entirely dependent on justice. Wherever there is a threat to peace or peace has been broken, there always is a, an unjust attitude as culprit behind that uh, disturbance or disorder. So all the world politicians should pay attention to the question, the fundamental question of absolute justice. If somehow they agree as a whole that all human affairs must be settled on the principle of justice, then all the issues relating to peace and disturbances will be resolved automatically. So without attending to the basic cause of, of disorder, any answer will be meaningless. It may satisfy some, it may, some may not agree with it, but uh, no purpose will be solved if I, no purpose will be served if I give a superficial answer. As I have already told you, everywhere the basic issue is that of injustice. Wherever we find injustice, we must have a common cause against it. Thank you. It has been said that ghosts and spirits exist around people, and people have been said to have seen them and felt them. Is this true? Have you ever seen yourself? Um, any ghost, any spirit are hovering around you? No, not really. Huh? I haven't seen either. <laughs> But it has been like so. Said those who claim, let's ask them. Right? Okay. Whole ghost and spirits, you said, right? But of course, one sometimes experiences uh, something like phantoms. What they truly mean, we do not understand. And uh, if they carry a message, then that they might represent a sort of vision from God. If they are without message, they just scare you, then they could be understood as a psychic phenomenon. Some inward disturbance is taking shape of these illusions. Right? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Huzur, there are some questions which a lady who's present here has passed on. And she would, uh, yes. A lady who's present here, she has written these questions, but she doesn't want to appear herself. Right. There are a lot of questions she has. It starts with, what are the differences between an Ahmadi and a Sunni apart from believing in the Mahdi? Ahmadi and a Sunni Muslim. Ji. Not Ahmadi and Shia Muslims. 
right? No, she has asked about Sunni. Okay. You see, the major difference, differences, I should say, are quite a few. And uh, it will take a long time to answer this question fully. And maybe it deprives others of their chances of asking questions. I will try to be brief without giving arguments on either side. Right? First of all, it's difficult to answer on behalf of all the Sunnis because they are subdivided into 34 sects. So how can I undertake the exercise of representing the different beliefs of 34 sects and then compare them to us? So let us stick only to those of the Sunni beliefs which I find common among them and uh, compare them with Ahmadiyya beliefs. First of all, we believe as a whole, as Ahmadiyya community, that Islam does not present a God who has ceased to speak to human beings or who will ever cease to speak to human beings at any cross-section of human history. So if he spoke in the past, he would continue to speak in the, in, in the future and present inclusive if and when he so desires. So, unfortunately, the present-day Sunni Muslims have uh, adopted a, a, an attitude towards wahi, ilham, etc., which is very negative in nature. This, is, this has not been the view of the Sunnis throughout the history of 13, 1400 years ago, of, of, of the past up to Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Many uh, scholars as well as divine holy people among them have claimed to be recipient of Allah's revelations in some form. But unfortunately, I'm talking of the contemporary Sunnis. They seem to have lost hope in revelation. And this is what is emphasized in Ahmadiyyat. We believe that the essence of all religion is to lead to God, just not in uh, theory, but practically to make man capable of being in communion with God or capable of achieving such good conduct that God, if he chooses, may communicate with him. That is a better expression. So that's one big, big difference. And as such, the emphasis on prayer also is very much uh, reduced and weakened among the other Sunnis. The prayer seems to be just a formal expression of raising hands and dropping them. While in Ahmadiyya, the institution of prayer is taken very seriously. And all the Ahmadis over the world experience the benefit of prayer in the form of their, its acceptance and uh, also again in the form of messages from God through dreams sometimes, through visions, also through revelations. So that is another thing which uh, distinguishes Ahmadiyya prominently as against the other Sunni sects. Again, they believe in the Jesus Christ not to have been crucified at all. This is their belief. The belief that what the thing which was crucified, they believe, of course, that something happened, some person or somebody looking like Christ was crucified. So what they say is that that thing which was crucified was in fact a Jew. And he was completely transformed at the bidding of God by two angels who descended, got hold of a Jew, who was, as previous to that, was a sworn enemy of Jesus Christ. So he transformed his figure so perfectly 
that it was impossible even for the disciples of Jesus Christ 